I made a video a little while ago talking about the production of demo people and worthless people. I'm gonna give you a breakdown on those two groups of people. At the moment, Robert Card is still free. And this is someone who killed 18 people, harmed 13. So all together, this man is responsible for the death or damage to 31 people. And his story is really interesting because he was in the military as a reservist and he had a mental breakdown while he was in the military to the point that they actually put him in a mental hospital. Now, here's the thing that's funny. This guy's um, background was with guns. So you have someone that you know, not assume, not, but you actually know is mentally injured. We'll say mentally injured. You actually know this. And this person has access to guns. In my opinion, if people have taken the right actions with this individual, this is something that could have been prevented. But why did he become a demo and a worthless person? And let's talk about it. I get a lot of comments. What's a demo person? What's a demo person? A demo person is someone who is just not mentally set right. These people are aggressive, violent, angry. And if you get into an argument with them, a switch flips, you can end up dead dealing with a demo person because they just simply don't care. A worthless person is someone that's a few steps above a demo person. And this is why I kind of use these terms interchangeably because you're talking about the same personality type. And I want you to think, have you ever had a dream or woke up and said, I'm going to go to a mall, I'm going to go to an elementary school, and I'm just going to shoot a bunch of people. I have never in my wildest dreams or that's, that thought has never entered my head. So this is just the beginning of evil. This is just the beginning because the way that our country is set up, we're producing these people like Coke is producing Coke cans in the factory. We're, di we're producing these demo and worthless people because here's the thing. And here's one of the things in the case of Robert Carr, who was in the military, who was a sergeant first class, that's an E7. So in one side of his life, he was able to be a competent, well-functioning human being. On the other side of his life, he was a stark raving lunatic. And this is one of the things, and this is something I've said and I keep saying, you could be having a conversation with a demo person and not know you're talking to a demo person until that switch is flipped. I don't know what flipped this switch to make him go to the two places that he went to, a bowling alley and a bar, and just to start shooting people he didn't know. I have no clue. But what I do have knowledge and a clue about is we have more and more people like this who are becoming and entering our society. And part of this kind of goes back to the breakdown of the family unit. When I was growing up, there was not one homeless person in my neighborhood, not once. Everybody had family. Everyone had someone to take care of them, everyone. There was no, I, I didn't even, matter of fact, if I remember correctly, there weren't even homeless people in downtown Birmingham. So this homeless thing, and just stick with me, as we move further and further and further away from a family unit, this is where people get lost. And this is how you have people living on the streets. Uh, if you were to go, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. If you were to go to downtown Atlanta, and if you were driving under the underpasses, if you would look to your right or look to your left and look up, you will see tents. There's a lot of people who are living on the side of the street. And this is one of the things that goes into the creation or the manufacture of these um, people who can be very, very 
dangerous. These people who can do a lot of damage. In the case of Robert Card, who damaged 31 people. He killed 18, he damaged 13. And first of all, I want you to think, I want you to really, really think. When I was growing up, and I grew up in a culture where we used to get into fights, it was a common thing for young men to get into fights. And frequently, if you had in a really good fight, this guy would somehow become your better friend, you know, because this allowed boys to get their aggression out and to be manly and do things right. Well, these folks don't have no sparring partners. They grow up in these vacuums. And when I made that video, there were several people in the comments. I was fear mongering. That was that I was off base, that I didn't know what I was talking about. I should stick to finance. And then there was a lot of you in the comments who was like, this just happened. This is the thing he's talking about. And one of the things I would say, if you think that I, if me telling you the truth is fear mongering, you're living in a bubble. And sooner or later that bubble's gonna pop. Because here's the thing. It's 2023, 2024. A lot of the things that we're, I'm discussing in these videos are going to get worse. And with the manufacture of these demo and worthless people, people who just literally wake up with the ideal in their head that I'm going to go out and kill somebody. Going back to growing up and we used to get in fights, there was a limit to how far you go with a fight. Because I grew up in Alabama and I remember these two guys were fighting and this one guy looked down and saw a brick and he picked up the brick and he was about to swing it, then he dropped the brick. Because he knew going upside this kid's head with a brick was gonna be too far. There was inherent limits to how violent you would get. And typically a fight would last a minute to three minutes because if you've ever been fighting anyone it's extremely physically exhausting if you're not in the shape if you don't train the fight just two minutes of fighting could literally wear you out and put you just knock all the energy out your body so we had people who would fight but there was limits and I'm gonna tell you why there were limits because these people still had a sense of humanity. They knew that they were fighting another person. They wasn't fighting an, an enemy or some type of demon or an alien. They were fighting another person and they were fully aware that they were fighting another person. And with that, that brought certain limits that they would only go so far. They wouldn't just keep going and keep going and they wouldn't keep going. But in the case of Robert Carr, this is my thoughts on the situation. This is the beginning of evil. This is just the beginning of evil. We are on a path where we're gonna have more shootings. We're gonna have more people like this. We're gonna have more situations like this. And in the case of Robert Card, someone that multiple people knew that this guy had a mental breakdown, multiple people, to the point where they put him in a mental hospital. And if someone is like, okay, and his training in the military, he was a gun specialist. And at that point, someone should have removed all of his access to weapons. Someone should have filed a report with the police that, hey, we have a service member who has been emotionally disturbed. We had to remove him from freedom and we had to put him in the hospital and we want to revoke all of access to his guns. Now, this shouldn't have pissed off anyone who's a gun rights activist because this man had documented and proven mental issues. Documented and proven mental issues. So if they was like, hey, this guy's acting funny, he's weird, we don't really trust him around guns, I don't think that would have been a big deal. But I think this is just the beginning of the demo and worthless people moving forward because as a society, we don't have those protective covers. Like I said, when we were growing up, there were no homeless people in my neighborhood. As far as I know, there were no homeless people in downtown Birmingham. 
because everyone had a family member or family situation to protect them. And now we don't have that. And this is really interesting with Robert Carr. They've been able to um, find people in this neighborhood. And there was an interview of a young man where it was known that people should stay away from him because there was something about this guy. So this wasn't somebody who was just like straight up um, normal, living a normal life. And then one day he flipped. This was someone who had documented evidence of a mental disorder and there was social knowledge of him being someone not to mess with someone not to toy with that you should leave robert alone and we had all of these signals the reason i'm doing this video is to talk about the robert card that we know the incidents that we know the things that happened we know that this guy had mental problems we knew this before he went out and injured, shot and injured 31 people. And at the time of this video, he has not been caught. There's a manhunt. They found his car. And this is something else. And I really want you to think about this. This man who clearly has issues was smart enough to flee the police. He's been smart enough to been able to hide that tells me there's a level of intelligence in this evil. And why do I use the term evil? For the, for the life of me, I cannot fathom, I have never even imagined hurting anyone or killing anyone. That has never came to me. But once again, I realize I'm a human and anyone else I interact with is human. And there's limits there. Now, when I talk about evil, these guys are going to get more and more evil, more and more things are going to happen. And like I said, when I made that video and I want to say thank you to the people who were talking about this is going on right now because I made the video and it happened and people were talking about it. And for all you folks who feel that I'm fear mongering, I, I have a suggestion go somewhere else and watch another YouTube channel because clearly uh, you don't want to hear the message, which is fine. You as an American or wherever you are in the world, that's your right. You can just go, just excuse yourself from the platform because if you think that me talking about things before they happen, before they happen is fear mongering and just want to keep you broke and all this other stuff, once again, just dismiss yourself and go watch another YouTube channel and leave your, keep your comments to yourself and just get gone. That's what I got to say to you because essentially what is happening is these changes in our social economic landscape are producing these demo and worthless people. They're producing them and they're going to be more of them and more of them and more of them because typically in our society, we just do, we just have a lot of people who are fitting this demographic who are really, really, really becoming a part of this situation in terms of pure evil. And I want you to understand, if you look at it, where do they go? They go to elementary schools, they go to churches, they go to malls, but this whole thing, I want you to think, what type of evil has to be on your heart for you to go to an elementary school and to shoot little kids? That's just kind of crazy to go in there and put a gun to the head of a child of someone who's, you know, six, six, seven years old, which is crazy. And that's why I use the term evil. That is 100 percent evil that is not normal that is not decent and one of the things that is happening as we get into this situation is we're having more and more of these people being birthed into our civilization we have more and more people who are entering this situation more and more people who are really really part of the evil and this is why i use the term demo people 
you know, demo, demolition, destructive. These are demo people, worthless people, people who are part of our society that bring no value, do not help anyone, who will literally pull down people like, like this guy who shot this woman and her daughter on Stone Mountain Highway because they got into a little road rage incident. This man pulled his gun, cocked it, and started shooting through his car door or maybe he let down the window. I'm not sure. I don't have all the details, but I do know that he started shooting at her car and actually shot her in the foot while she was traveling down Highway 78 with her young daughter. That is evil. That is not normal. That is not sane. And once again, we're entering into the percepts of evil. We're entering into the percepts of these things and these demo people. And I guarantee you, if you go further in this life, because there's a lot of information out about him, there's people who are attached to his uh, Facebook page, and it, apparently it doesn't look like he was married, doesn't look like he had any children. That's a sign. And this is some we used to say, which I don't really think is 100% true, but when you have a person who reaches a certain age and they're not married and they don't have any kids, typically there was something wrong with them. Now, in 100%, this isn't 100% of the cases, but typically for someone to move to our society and not develop these bonds or situations usually is a warning sign of what's coming, usually a warning sign. So one of the things that you have to be aware of and one of the things that you have to understand is you're going to have to move with great caution in our society today. If someone gets into a little road rage incident to me, I hit the brakes, I get away from that person because you don't know what's in that car. You don't know. You have no clue what's in that car. You have no clue to what disposition this person may have. You have no clue. And you could become a victim just like that for messing around with a demo or worthless person because these people do not care. I was watching this movie of these people who were possessed and maybe on the spiritual level, that's the same things happening. I'm not saying this, I have no proof, but for you to just go ahead and commit evil acts, there, there's something to it. There's just something to it. Hopefully they will catch this guy soon and hopefully he will be put in an electric chair because there is no guessing. They, they've got, they know that he did it. They know that he did it. 